and you can't drive your car up to it kind of thing. So you got to pick up the big heavy stove and walk through the, all the woods. That said, like, no zombies spawn over there of any meaningful number, so it's not that big a deal. But it is one of those things, just to keep in mind, you'll be a little bit vulnerable while you're there. Oh crap, I'm still carrying all this cloth. Right, today's supposed to be super foggy, which is no surprise. We are getting a late start today, so that's that's fine. What I think we'll do is we'll just use this as a uh, day to get stuff done around here. I'm just going to keep shoveling fish into our mouth as fast as we can. Because I don't want us to get underweight. So, we're gorging. I want those to be seed blooming, or seed bearing. Because they're probably getting low. I just realized I will need my saw and my nails. Because uh, generally when I'm doing these really long runs, the strategy I kind of go into it is days when the situation is crap, we work on the base. Days when things are nice. Interesting, Cog. I, I've had that with potatoes. Potatoes, I've had really bad luck about getting to seed bearing. The other ones, not so much. I'm also curious what this will say about the fog. Yeah, weather effect, almost 60% foraging penalty. Not a surprise. Yeah, we go like the cabbages are like fantastic. I um I like to have the potatoes as well, so I use a little. I use I mean to be fair, I plant everything, but generally speaking, for like my main stuff, I will use potatoes and cabbages. And the reason for that is cabbages grow fast, so that's nice. Uh, the potatoes, you know, the thing that's really nice about them is that not. Oh, I don't have an axe on me. Right. Uh, I like those because they last for freaking ever in storage like I still think I have fresh potatoes in this freezer that probably came from like the harvest we had at the end of October and you know here we are coming up on May well I'm I'm Losing track of what I'm even doing. Give me axe. Man, our calories must have been real low if I'm shoveling this much fish in our mouth and we're still not even neutral on weight. There we are, we're neutral on weight. We're still not gaining weight. Ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a pretty good fish. It's gonna give us thirty-seven hunger. That's that's a big fish. Alright, so we're just gonna start chopping down more trees. First of all, as always, I'm going to do a little patrol around the trees. Make sure I don't see anything. I'm going to yell a little bit, try and draw anything out. Reason we're doing this. Just in case there's a zombie that's wandered into the area. I want to make extra sure that zombie doesn't mess with us while we're cutting down trees. Yep, absolutely. That is the reason we are taking all the time to yell, to scream. I haven't seen a zombie too much in the area in a while, so I'm feeling pretty good about it, but still. You do want to be careful. Cutting down trees is extremely exhausting. Oh, I still have a bunch of logs laying here. That's fine, whatever.
I'm suddenly realizing I'm pretty sure I have a wood axe. Like an actual, like, axe for chopping down trees, not just a fireman's axe that I'm using to chop down trees. That said, it's back at the base, which is like 10 feet away, and that's just entirely too far to walk. But yeah, the real danger with chopping trees is you are getting yourself really exerted really fast. You are trying to get um, really hot and all that kind of stuff. And so, like, you're doing all that, and there's a chance the zombie just walks through the tree at you. And you're suddenly just, like, you're too tired to move at any me meaningful speed or swing your weapon. And so you just kind of sit there and the side just goes up and goes, Hi. And you're just like, oh. It's the teeth you love. Oh yeah. The wood axe is amazing for chopping down trees. It is absolutely terrible as a combat weapon, in my opinion. Because it's... The wood axe is effectively the sledgehammer of axes. It hits like an absolute truck when you connect, but its swing speed is absolutely horrendously slow. So the danger is you go fight a group, you smash that first zombie, and boy, you've wrecked that first zombie. Like, generations of that zombie's people felt the, the hit you laid on that zombie. But... All the other zombies just overwhelm you in the two seconds it takes you like to try and get that axe back up again. But that's like the same problem with the sledgehammers. You can kill zombies, but like it it hits hard, but it's just so slow. And then on top of that, you get like three swings and your character needs to like take a nap they've gotten so exhausted. Yeah, I, I would say the only weapons, in my opinion, that are like actively super dangerous to use as weapons, is the wood axe and the um, and the sledgehammer. Uh, spears can be with the animations and all that, but like that's just when the animations aren't well timed versus just using using a wood axe and that is rough. Uh, you use crowbar, knife, and hand axe. Absolutely, I I use the crowbar a lot. I use the hunting knife a lot, a lot, as you can tell by the fact we have um, 46,000 kills and my hunting knife is my main go-to. Uh, spiked bat is good. Like, the hand axe is a very respectable weapon. Uh, honestly, the fireman's axe isn't a bad weapon, it's just I'm not the biggest fan of axes as a weapon. I, I use axes as tools. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I always forget about those. Yes, the guitars specifically are terrible. Um, they also have very slow swing speeds. Their uh, their damage is okay-ish. Not great, just kind of okay. So yeah, to, to me the guitars are absolutely a trap. Yep, it goes like, give me a regular old hammer any day. Absolutely. Like the regular plain old claw hammer or ball peen hammer in the game. Both of those are absolutely excellent weapons. Uh, does it matter what side of the wall you build on? Nope. Not at all. Part of me wonders if it's just like April and May in the game just have like really lousy weather and like that's just normal. 
Because it does feel like I'm constantly dealing with fog and rain and all that. But I don't know anything about, like, real-life Kentucky to be like, Oh yeah, that checks out, or no, that's just nothing like Kentucky. I don't know much about Kentucky. Heard there was chicken in Kentucky? Well, there was, but then this restaurant showed up and the chicken population really said, no, I, I don't know. But yes, there, there is definitely Kentucky Fried Chicken, the brand. Okay, I was like, it's going to be Christmas soon for me. I wonder if any zomboid are going to give gifts. I mean, here's hoping that a zombie is like, I heard you like katanas. How would you like a katana? And for the record, for those who don't know, when it comes to katanas in the game, there's only two ways to find katanas normally. You can, on the very, very, very rare occasion, find them in survivor houses. Uh, don't count on that. They are very rare. Or you can find them stuck in zombies. They're still pretty rare stuck in zombies. The caveat is they don't show up at all in zombies until you're past two months into the game. So if you just start a new save file, congratulations, you have to survive two months before you'll see a single katana in a zombie. Now, on the other hand, I cut down too many logs. On the other hand, if you start like a run that's the six months later run or one of those other ones, or you just change your date to be more than two months from the outbreak, then it's like that's that's the determining thing, not play time, survive time. How long from the outbreak you've spawned is determining what weapons you'll find. I'm uh, not going to repeat that one, but... I mean, the implication is all the zombies have katanas stuck in them, so... Who knows? Maybe that's how long they managed to stay sheltered in place and all that stuff. Maybe they're all a bunch of preppers and that's just like when their prepper supply finally ran out. Because I could certainly see people having prepper supplies for two months. After that, that's probably not realistic. I mean, to a certain extent, a lot of shut-ins would, so long as, again, they were keeping sufficient supplies. That's the caveat. Because I know a lot of people, even if you're like shut-ins or whatever kind of thing, it's not like you sit there and go, what do I have in my cupboard? Oh, I have, you know, six weeks of non-perishable goods and water or other liquids that, you know, have enough water in it to matter. How long can a person subsist on Mount Dew? If you're talking just Mount Dew, probably not long. Um, if you're having literally just Mount Dew, I don't even want to think of the effects that's going to have on your body if you're doing that for any length of time. Like I'm talking like days to weeks of nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't even think you have to worry about kidney stones. I'm just thinking of like... Literally all of your fluids you're getting are just dense caffeine kind of things. You know, no no meaningful vitamins, no like no protein, no fiber. Yeah. Uh Quigo says, week two you can flip your key oh gross. Keyboard crummies. I'm I'm sure many of you have probably seen the meme where it's um keyboard sprinkles it's just like breadcrumbs and all that kind of nonsense it's like oh from from working it and going like not so much working it honestly in it when your keyboard gets gross we chuck that in the garbage can like it's like you're gonna clean that keyboard nah that's a five dollar keyboard that's going in the trash i am not cleaning that 
the amount of hair that keyboards manage to capture is is something science has probably yet to figure out how is capable. But uh, with like a nice mechanical keyboard, as well as things you do periodically, where you pull up your keys and just go, "Yep, all of this is gross." Oh no, I'm not talking about like it growing hair. I'm talking about like the hair falls off your head and it gets woven between the keys. If if you've ever had any any length of hair, that isn't a real thing that happens real bad. Still not as bad as um I worked at a machine shop that we had it was a um, oil-based lubricant for a whole bunch of the machines to run there because you know you need to do that otherwise the machines just grind each other up and they're all destroyed but that you know it would get to the heat set it would kind of like get into the air and everything and for the most part things were fine it had decent ventilation in the floor and everything but then you had like the wiring closets well the wiring closets didn't have like really good ventilation away from this it depended on the ventilation for the rest of the shop and just all that stuff would collect in there. And it was just this... This, like, goop that got all over everything. Because, you know, it would it'd be vapor, and then as the vapor, you know, turned back into liquid and all that, it would just get into everything and destroy everything. There was more than once that we pulled, like, a computer out of that cabinet, opened up the side of the case, and went, Nope. <laughs> like, this, this computer is done. This is in the trash. I'm pulling the hard drive, you know, wiping it down with everything I can find, and the rest of this computer is just going in the garbage because there is no salvaging whatever this nonsense is all over this thing. Because you'd have, like, this film all over the motherboard and everything. It was just this oil-based lubricant for the machines evaporating. Well, not e I mean, it was evaporating, but it was evaporating because, you know, machine making lots of friction. I remember the first time I went to that wiring closet, like, no one had been in there forever because no one did. And it's like, okay, well, we need to expand the equipment in here to support more CNC machines on the floor. And I about completely busted my butt because I stepped on there and just immediately my foot slid to the side because there's just, just that crap all over the floor. Elgo says, they should put a snowplow in Zomboid so that I can get all these corpses off the road. It, it would be interesting if they actually added a meaningful way to deal with the corpses in-game. Like, whether it's a snowplow or, like, a wheelbarrow or something. That, like, you can just pick them, like... You can pull the wheelbarrow up to the corpse, and rather than having to pick up the body and put it in the wheelbarrow, if the wheelbarrow was close enough to the corpse, you could just right-click the corpse and say, like, put in wheelbarrow, and it would just do the interaction start to finish for you. Goes saying you should be able to put them in the compost bin. Actually, when you're making proper compost, you are not supposed to put meat products in your compost. You got your browns and your greens. Your browns is stuff like twigs, wood, cardboard, that kind of crap, paper. And then you got your greens, which is like vegetables, fruit, uh, leaves. Actually, no, I think leaves count as a brown. Either way. But uh, you're not supposed to put like meat you know, milk, anything like that. Eggshells are kind of the one weird exception, though. I've never heard of citrus not going in there. I could see why not put citrus in there, because it would make it, um, make it very acidic. I mean, that would make sense. But yeah, now generally you're not supposed to put, um, Certain meats, uh, like even honestly, if you have fruits and veggies, if the fruits and veggies are to the point that they actually have like mildew and mold growing on them, 
you're also not supposed to throw them directly into compost. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of times it can just make your compost into just this absolute, like, bacteria petri dish for those molds and mildews. It's not technically bacteria, it's mold. But, and so then you've just got this whole thing full of mold and all that. Because you want, you want stuff like natural bacteria in the soil and worms and that kind of stuff to break up all your stuff so you get all the nutrients out of it. Versus, say, if you have, like, you know, you have a fungus to attack tomato, that attacks tomatoes and all that kind of stuff, and you chuck that in your bin, and then you use that soil and you grow tomatoes in it, well, you might be just taking some type of mildew or fungus that attacks tomato plants and growing it. I can see that. I can see it being a problem with it attracts critters and then the critters become problematic. But yeah, I remember the big thing that, like, over here, they're like, you know, yeah, don't, like, don't, don't put that in your, your compost. But then eggshells are like this one, like, kind of exception where it's like, don't put animal product in your compost, except eggshells are okay. And I, like, I think there was something that are in eggshells that was really good that they're like, yeah, that, that can go in there. Oh, so Elgos was saying apparently the reason you don't put meat in um, compost is because it tends to attract rats. And so it goes, so in Zomboid you could put compost, you could put zombies in the compost and it would be a trapping skill. Fair. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I mean, where I am in Florida, the chance of you being able to handle all the critters that are living in the area and not have an issue is probably not realistic. There's just too many critters. We live among the critters. The critters do not live among us here. Like, I love all the times you have, like, one of the neighbors who's like, Hey, can you get rid of the snakes? No. No, I cannot. It's not that no, I'm unwilling. I mean, no, really. That isn't a thing that is realistic or possible. Yep, and Elgos is like, well, I got bears in the area, so I couldn't handle critters either. That was uh, one of the running jokes I had. So, like, the first type of pest I was dealing with in my garden was leaf miners. So there are these little bugs that they dig, or they land on a leaf. It's like a little fly. It lands on a leaf, you know, lays an egg in the leaf, and then the larvae eat the inside, like, they, like, mine their way through the leaf in these really neat, like, mosaic-looking patterns. But they kill your plant by just digging through the leaves from the inside. And so they suck. And so I found ways to deal with it, them and got rid of them. And those are, for the record, one of the ones that wasps get rid of. So, you know, that whole, that whole mixed feeling where wasps are both really annoying bugs that I don't like having around, but they also protect my plant, so, you know, mixed bag feelings about them. But, um, you got rid of those. And after that, I had stuff like aphids showing up and all that. So I dealt with those. You know, a little bit bigger of a bug. You know, got rid of the aphids. And then I was dealing with um, caterpillars. So again, a little bit bigger of a bug. Got rid of those. And then I was dealing with stuff like raccoons and that were like eating. Like, the, the raccoons are the worst because not only were they like eating the tomatoes and that, but they would take like one bite out of a tomato and I guess decide it wasn't ripe enough or whatever. And so then they go to the next tomato and they would take one bite out of the tomato. And so I just have like four or five tomatoes with one giant bite out of each one. I'm like, well, at least finish it. Like, 
If you just finished one of these, you could have left me at least a few. The other one they'll do is if you have pineapple, they'll be like super dastardly. That they'll like eat from the side of the pineapple and eat around the core of the pineapple but leave the outer shell in place. And so if that opening they went through is on the other side of the pineapple, like you'll sit there and be like getting all excited that your pineapple is getting ready. And then you walk up to it and just the pineapple collapses and that stuff. like, what? And that's terrible because you only get one pineapple per plant per year. So, real big jerk. But I mostly got the raccoons managed and then I had deer show up. And it's kind of like one of those things like I'm half terrified to get rid of the deer because every single time I get rid of a pest I get something bigger and I'm scared of what comes after deer. Like, deer are big enough. There's not many animals in this area that do get bigger than the deer. Like, you got some bears, but not really where. I mean, I, I did have, um... I still don't know to this day if it's like my, my lawn service or my neighbor's lawn service kind of thing. But I did have one time I came up that is like, I had a pineapple missing that was very, very clearly cut from the plant. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see what happened here. Yeah, the good thing is gators don't do anything to gardens. They, they have a complete lack of interest in plant. Kubi says, well, send the gorillas to kill the deer, and then in winter they'll simply freeze to death. Except Florida, where we don't have a winter. So then the gorillas will reign supreme. But yeah, it was one of those things where it's like very clearly someone stole my pan pineapple. I'm like, alright, come on, people. They take forever to grow, and then it's like you can finally see it's like, oh, it's gonna be ripe soon. Let's get excited. And then someone beats you to it, and you're like, oh, come on. You are true. I, I do not want an alligator in my garden. This this is a fact. I prefer my alligators a long way away from anywhere I am going to be. They are an apex predator. And we have run out of nails, so I need to open another box of nails. And then we're just about to wrap up with the uh, the base building kind of thing. Because I'll put the last, like, five pieces of wall. We're getting pretty close to late in the evening. Means tomorrow we can roll out and make more progress on Rosewood. And we've already made pretty good progress. We got down to, um... Like, we're actually getting into downtown already over there. Oh yeah, no, I, I know the Simpsons joke, Hobie. Yeah, it's something like they, they talk about at one point, like, bringing in lions and all that. Just, like, continuing to escalate more and more and more. Just like, hang on, wait a second. Let's, let's think this through. Yeah, I think the next bad weather day we'll be able to wrap it up. I can get that done all in one in one day easy. And then that means our um, area to work on cars and fuel up and our generator, all of that will be secure so you don't have to worry about zombies there.
You know, at this point, I'm going to start leaving the propane torch in here. And the welder's mask. So let's put away the axe. Put the hammer away. Grab the lead pipe. Grab all the lead pipes. Okay. Grabbing our stack of fish, however much we can fit in here. Cook those bad boys up. Then we'll start grabbing some more veggies. Okay, so we grabbed all the fish we can, we'll cook it. Um, let's see. Uh, Z, I thought farm plots should be spaced by two. Sorry, I'm new to this game. Um, I haven't seen the need to put them by two. I could be wrong, in all honesty. I haven't had much of a, like, that's kind of those things. Like, I took the time to set that up, but even when I have put all the plants bunched up into one spot, it's been fine even when disease spreads, because you just get rid of the plants that are no good and you plant new ones. But um, I haven't really noticed disease spread on the plants at all. But then again, I could be wrong. Yeah, and it's all good being new at the game. Uh, Cog says, with metalwork, you can replace metal garage doors that zombies destroyed? No. Uh, the metal garage doors, once they're destroyed, they're gone. You, the closest you can do is you can build these um these wooden double doors to replace them. It is kind of one of the bummers is once those metal doors are gone, they're gone, and that's just the way you gotta gotta live with it. Uh, I'm guessing we're all out of push-ups because I haven't had anyone redeem any in a long time. That means I've lost count. Because I believe by what I have here, I'm at 80 push-ups? Okay, so there were more push-ups. Okay, so I will do this. That wasn't me trying to bait out the push-ups. It's just like, you know, as, as much as people are on top of the push-ups early on, I'm like, okay, if there's just no one redeeming anymore, I guess we ran out. All right, we'll get those push-ups, and I'll be right back. All right, let me take one moment to uh, update those counts. So I should be at 2,507 according to what I have here. No, 2,587. So I, I have failed hard on updating my number on the label. That's probably from I've had a couple of streams that were game specifically vampire survivors that while it's up I can't alt tab so I try and just jot down how many times people redeem push-ups so I bet you that's when it got all wrong. Okay so if my math is right at this point there should only be one more redemption left for the stream before we've redeemed all the push-ups. All right put out the fire in the antique stove Grab all the fish. Drop that in the floor. Yeah. 
and we'll start washing all our clothes. And while that's happening, I'm going to put the desk back down to sitting down. Uh, no, at the moment we're not fishing, we're washing our clothes. Just because we could. It's been a long time since our character got a bath. Character got a bath, so it's like, ah, eh, let's take a bath. Okay, let's see. Drink some water. Fill our empty bottles. Oh, I don't have enough space to uh, put my bottles in my bag. That's fine, whatever. We have our wonderful katana bed with 21 katanas.